Russia. At the end of the last episode, I was machining an adapter to allow me to fit the mini's temperature sensor into the micro's block. With that done, I can now move on to looking at nuts and bolts. This next part is going to involve some chemistry. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you, I have not done this before. But what we're going to attempt to do is start plating some of the fasteners. Now as I said, I haven't done this before, however I did buy this kit uh, about a week ago and I've read through the instructions beforehand. As well as the kit, I found out you're also going to need some additional plastic buckets, some distilled water and a 12 volt power supply. Most battery chargers will do it, but do check the specs of your battery charger compared to the instructions. So, with that being said, let's uh, crack open the box and get on with this. Right, we've got circuit wired up. So, let's say 12 volt battery charger. We have the negative that connects to the parts that you want to plate or clean. And then you have the positive that goes through this quite crude but effective uh, current controller. And that goes to your two zinc anodes. Next thing we need to do is mix up the alkali cleaner that's provided in the kit. It needs approximately 25 grams per litre. Uh, these are five litre tubs. However, with the small quantity of parts, I'm gonna mix up about half of it. So I've got myself an old set of kitchen scales. I've got gloves. I've got goggles on that provided in the kit. So uh, yeah, let's start mixing some chemicals. And after reading through the instructions and the warning labels on some of the chemicals, I decided not to take any chances and use the PPE that was provided in the kit. The fact that they provide it in the kit should be a good indication that it is required, and so anyone that thinks, I don't need that, in my opinion, you're an idiot. Anyway, rant over, let me mix up the alkali cleaner solution, the acyl pickle solution, the zinc plating solution, and a passivate solution. With all the chemicals mixed up correctly and in their respective buckets, the first step was to put the parts in the alkali degreaser. Not sure if you'll be able to hear that over the sound of traffic outside, but I can very faintly hear little bubbles popping. With the first batch of parts put through the alkali degreaser cycle, they were then moved on to the acid pickle. With the parts put through their required acid pickle cycle, they were then rinsed off in distilled water before being moved on to the zinc plating solution. It's important to note that the anode and the cathode need cleaning as well, so as not to contaminate the plating solution. And finally, the parts were washed in the passivate chemical. This is a step that gives the parts its colour, either a bright shiny silver colour or that gold appearance you might have seen on some fasteners, depending on which one you choose. I chose a solution that gave me the bright shiny silver colour. Unfortunately, I didn't capture any of this on camera as I had to have the bucket on the floor due to my bench not being large enough to hold all four of them. Hmm. Yeah, they are plated, but it's not brilliant. First thing is it's looking dull and grey, which the instruction says is a sign that the current is too high. Now, I can't go any lower on their current controller, so I'm going to have to look at a different power unit than my car battery charger. And the other one is that I think I think it needed to spend longer in the pickle. It did get him just some of the rust on the internal threads of the nuts. Now, oh well, as I said, this is my first attempt, so we'll try again. Over the last couple of weeks, my dad and I have stripped back, cleaned everything, and either plated or painted it ready for assembly. So the next job is to start reassembling the car. However, before we do that, I'm just going to take a minute to say the plating technique that I used, if I'm going to be honest, I am disappointed with the results. Now, it's probably something to do with my setup, so I'm not going to name and shame the company that I bought the plating kit from. All I will say, considering the effort involved of it, the cost of the kit, and the cost of the additional items you have to buy to go with the kit, it personally, in my opinion, wasn't worth doing it, and it would have just been easier, probably about the same amount of money to buy all new fasteners. So i will note for next time. Anyway, that being said, let's start reassembling this car and cue the time lapse. The first thing to do was to clean the mating surface between the cylinder head and the rocker cover. If you remember earlier in the build, I had to modify a vent tube, which meant that the rocker cover had to come off. I only ever loosely fitted it back on, so now came the time to finally replace the rocker cover gasket. 
Now, I went and bought an entire engine gasket kit uh, because it worked out it was actually cheaper to buy this lot than just an exhaust and uh, inlet manifold gasket. I also ended up getting all the other gaskets, for example, the rocker cover and the time chain cover gaskets included. So, yeah, if you're going to do this, just check to see how much an entire kit is. It might be worthwhile buying the entire thing. With the mating surface clean, I put a few drops of high temperature sealant in the corners to make sure that there were no leaks and then fitted the rocker cover with its new gasket. With the rocker cover fitted, I turned my attention to the timing chain cover. Now contrary to what I just said, this cover doesn't actually have a gasket and instead is just fitted using a sealant. This meant, once again, I was cleaning mating surfaces. With the timing chain cover fitted, I cleaned off some overspray from the crank pulley and water pulley before moving on to the next job, which was to refit the thermostat and the new housing that was made for it. brand new filter on now because it's an awful lot easier to do this with the engine out of the car. Uh, the other thing is I'm also going to fill the oil filter up with oil because uh, I can put this, the engine in the position where I can do so if I not get oil everywhere. The first job in doing an oil filter change is, surprise surprise, remove the old filter. Amazingly I was able to unscrew the old one by hand. When fitting an oil filter you only need to do them up hand tight, there is no need to use excessive force. With the engine still on the engine stand, the next job was to give the sump another coat of paint. Months of it being moved around on my garage floor and on and off of various bits of wood had scratched it up. From this point onwards, the engine would not be put down directly on the floor in an attempt to protect it. Following morning after the paint had dried, I could refit some of the sensors that had been temporarily removed. This started by fitting the adapter that I made in the last episode. Now you may notice, contrary to what I said in the last episode, that I am fitting the adapter using an open-ended spanner. The reason I was actually doing this was because my dad was using my imperial sockets for something else at the time, and as the engine was out of the car, I had the room to get an open-ended spanner in place. <laughs> 
With the adapter fitted, I could then fit the Mini's temperature sensor. Followed by refitting the secondary Nissan temperature sensor that the ECU needs a signal from. And finally, the oil pressure sensor into the back of the engine block. With the engine prepped and ready to go back into the car, the next logical step was to get the gearbox ready. This started with me fitting the modified clutch release arm. The clutch release bearing is attached to the release arm via a couple of roll pins. While these do need to be hammered into place, if the holes between the shaft and the release bearing fork are aligned properly, you don't need to absolutely belt them in. They should knock in fairly easily. For some reason on the micro gearbox there is a secondary set of roll pins that need to be hammered into the middle of the first ones. No idea why they are fitted, but as they were originally fitted, eh, who am I to argue? Next job is to fit this plate, which you probably recognise from the earlier episode, which is the wiring loom passes through. Before we do that though, we're going to put a bead of sealant around this so this seals up against the bulkhead. Along with the bulkhead plate that the wiring passes through, I also fitted the modified plate that goes under the master cylinders, the fusion relay panel mounting bracket, and various rubber grommets and plastic clips that needed to be fitted into the bulkhead before the engine went in. With the bulkhead plate fitted, I could then move on to fitting the engine bay wiring. Oh good, comes with the top holes is it? Yeah. Comes with the top holes is it? Yeah. The top one's in the standard position for the mini. And those two are for the micro loom. My engine, basically this whole thing's set up so that the micro engine almost runs standalone. Um, you've got to put like power and stuff in. You've only got like five connections between the actual micro and the mini. Pull, pull that back one through that there. Hey. Black one. With the wiring loom passed through the bulkhead and as I had an extra pair of hands around in the form of my dad, we fitted the instrument cluster brackets. This needed to be done before the new bulkhead sound deadening and insulation was fitted.
for the sound deadening and plays the master cylinders that were rebuilt in a previous episode could go back in. Quick update, we have the wiring loom in place and rooted around the wing, all taped up. We now got the master cylinders back in and the modified plate that we created. And we've got the bracket in for the fuse and relay box. The next step is we get the engine and gearbox together and then we start lifting it into the engine bay. With the engine bay ready, it was finally time for the engine to come off the engine stand. That's it for this episode, come back next time when we make one final push to get the car ready for a road trip. If you've enjoyed this episode then please hit that like button and share. If you want to stay up to date with the build then please subscribe to my channel and you can follow my build thread on the mini forum, the link to which is in the description below. Once again, thanks for watching.